Hey, I'm here today with Paul Fuller, Chief Fuller, you may know him as. He's our Chief of the Fire Department. Actually, is that correct to say the Chief of the Fire chief Department? Chief of the Department, yeah. Okay, Chief, chief of the, of the Department. department. So, yeah. I'm, I'm here with Chief Fuller, and he's going to share with us uh, some latest news as it pertains to the Fire Department. Great. Well, well thanks for having me back. Sure. Um, new things going on is uh, we found out last week that we were awarded $75,000. Nice. That's going to go towards PPE, or we're going to use it towards turnout gear. Okay. Um, that's the structural turnout gear that we always wear on all of our calls. Um, big thing in, in the fire service is clean gear. Okay. You know, before it was the dirtier gear, the dirtier your helmet, you were a salty fireman. Yeah, you, know? yeah. you saw a lot of fire. <laughs> well, what we've been learning, especially since 9-11, is cancer is a leading cause of uh, death in firefighters, even when they retire out of the service. So is that like from debris, things that might, particles that might be on the clothing or the gear? Or? It, it is, it okay. is. Uh, a lot of things, we've lost more firefighters now uh, from 9-11 than we did actually on September 11th. Wow. More have died from cancer and carcinogens that they've gotten in 9-11 or fighting fires. But like you said, it is, it's due to the smoke, uh, the, the toxins that are in the smoke now, everything in our house, this is all plastics right, and right. filled with lots of toxins, especially when it burns. Right. So right. Uh, after a fire, after an incident, we need to take that gear, put it out of service and get it professionally cleaned oh, to get wow. that out of okay. there. Um, Issue is though, we don't have gear to wear when that gear is out of service and being cleaned. Okay. So uh, we're gonna get spare gear that we can, you know, we'll get new gear that we can always wear and then we'll have spare gear as well. So, so we'll always have clean gear, we'll always be in service and ready to respond. Wow, so that's, uh, I bet that's something that most people have never considered, no, you know, what so, happens and no. I know as, uh, photographers, video gear, you know, we always want redundancy. We want to have extra equipment. If we need a camera, we want to have two, maybe even three, mm -hmm. in case something happens. So I get it, it makes sense. So it's that's definitely, that's nice to hear that you're getting some grant money to, Absolutely. to help then, out with that. You know, it, it, it takes that burden now off of the taxpayers and the city to try and pay for that gear. Okay, great, so great. It, it's a win-win all around. The taxpayers don't have to pay for it. We, the firemen, can be clean gear. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully, you know, even after they retire, they can live a long life and be less likely to develop cancers from, from the job. Yeah, yeah, protection, safety gear is so important, so important. Oh, absolutely. So is there anything else going on that we should know about? Um, that's been the big element right now. Uh, that was just last week. Um, there's other things that are developing, but nothing yet. So uh, maybe maybe next month we'll have more to report on that. Okay. All right. So it looks like that's the latest with Chief Fuller here for Brigantine, Brigantine Living, and the Brigantine Fire Department. Well, thanks, thanks Paul. Greg, I appreciate always you a coming pleasure. in. Always Absolutely. A pleasure. Thank Take you. care. All right, I'm here today with Jack Murray. He is our, what would you say your official role is? Fire official. Fire, he's a fire official that would be in charge of inspections of your home or your businesses. And today we're gonna to talk about the top three overlooked items that people should be aware of for inspections. Right. What are they? Okay, so we get asked this question a lot. The com most common violations, number one would be our smoke and carbon alarms. A lot of times people don't realize that we look to see when your house was built prior to us entering and conducting the inspection and we'll pass that on to the inspector because if it's 1978 or before, it would be okay to have a 10 year sealed battery smoke detector that is just a single station, it's not connected to anything. But ultimately what we'd like is for everyone to have hardwired interconnected that makes everyone more safe. If there's a fire in the kitchen, it would notify the second floor if there's a second floor. So we would ultimately want hardwired interconnected. It's interesting because I was unaware that when you have hardwired systems like that, that they communicate to each other. I never knew that. I just figured they were hardwired for, so you wouldn't need a battery. I didn't realize they would then communicate if one goes off in the hallway. 
it's going to go off in the upstairs bedroom. So right. that's good to know. So that's something that is overlooked by a lot of homeowners. Right. So then the next thing would be carbon monoxide. Yeah, carbon monoxide, same thing if there's any kind of gas or fuel-fired appliances in the home, a fireplace or, or a garage or natural gas stove or natural gas heating, hot water heater or anything like that, you would want to know that those appliances are working efficiently and you would want to have a operating carbon monoxide alarm. And right, because some of those are odorless, right? So right. you're not going to smell it. Exactly. It's the, they call that the silent killer right. and, and this way if there's any kind of carbon and it goes off you'll be able to dial 911 have us get the detector in there a lot of times we'll call the gas company if it's a an appliance that's malfunctioning or something like that so it's important to have them if you have fuel fired or gas natural gas appliances in your house so what would be the next thing on your list the next thing is in 2022, the state of New Jersey passed a liability insurance law. So if you're renting property in the state of New Jersey, they want them to have a minimum of $500,000 liability insurance. And they're supposed to submit it to the local unit, which would be us, prior to renting the property. Okay. So that is often another thing that uh, something, you know, that would fail during inspection was they, they wouldn't have, it either wouldn't have the insurance or didn't know that the state passed the law. So we would want that, that, that's a very common thing right now. This pertains more towards somebody who's, it's a rental property? Right. So not an owner occupant? No, owner occupied okay. and, and actually none of these would be applied to owner occupied okay. because we wouldn't be inspecting your home. Really everything that we do in our office pertains to rental property okay. or commercial property. Gotcha. The third thing would be openable windows. So a lot of times it, it'll get painted over or over the years the window will get stuck. And if there are new renters, the window for whatever reason won't work. So that's the third most common sighted thing is openable when if it's not a fixed window where it's got a latch you can slide it up it's got all the things that and it's got to work so yes. if you're renting a property or you have a commercial business that has windows that should open mm -hmm. um, before you schedule your inspection it might be a good idea to go around and make sure they all function well right, right? so that's your top three items all right so Keep that in mind, uh, rental properties, businesses, uh, check these things out. All right. All right, well, Jack, thanks for stopping by. No problem. We appreciate it. Appreciate and uh, it. if anybody has questions pertaining to any of this, where would they? You could call the fire department, but also the fire prevention unit is 609-266-3102 or email us at fireprevention at brigantinebeachnj.com. All right, thank you. Well, there All you right. have thank it. Thank you. That's it, folks. Take care. Take care. All right, I'm here with Tiger Platt, our city manager for Brigantine, and we have some interesting things coming to Brigantine this summer. Would you like to share that? Yeah, so uh, thanks for having me back. I, sure. I appreciate it. I think it's great what you guys are doing. Uh, so we're going to be introducing Park Mobile okay. as, a, as our parking uh, you know, app or program for our beach, municipal beach parking lots for the summer season. So how it's going to work is in the past, people would have to go down to our, our beach fee office and wait in line, buy a parking sticker, and then they would put the sticker in the rear against the back of the rear view mirror in their car, right. and then uh, they would go ahead and park. Very, in the very old school. Old school, right? <laughs> so what, what we're doing is we're trying to modernize things, right? Okay. Uh, so now uh, Park Mobile is coming to town. They are going to handle all of our beach parking lots for the summer season. So that'll be Memorial Day through Labor Day. And how it'll work now is you'll still have the same options that you had before. So you have a seasonal option and then you have a daily parking option. So for seasonal, if, if you wanna buy a seasonal parking pass, again, before you went in, you got the sticker. Now all you can do is you can go on Park Mobile's app. If you have the app on their phone, you can create an account for Brigantine and you know pay for the, uh, the, the parking sticker for the season. You register it to your license plate on your vehicle and then that's all you do. You know, you pay for it and everything's great. Now, with the seasonal pass, you go to the beach, 
That's it. You just park in the lot. You don't have to do anything wow. else. You don't have to do anything that day. You don't have to your phone out. No, nope, you're, you're good. You bought the season pass. You're good for the whole season. That's it. It's pretty nice. For dailies, uh, they'll, there will be signs in each lot. So if somebody pulls up and they don't have the park, the seasonal pass, they'll be able to. There's a QR code. There's uh, different information that will direct them to go into the uh, app or go onto the Park Mobile website. Um, and I believe there's also going to be like a, a phone number or something you can call to, you know, if, if somebody uh, is unable to do it through their phone, like okay. through an app. And then they would buy the daily pass. Again, register the license plate of the vehicle they're using, and then they're good for the day. And, and that, that's that. So um, for enforcement, our, our uh, parking enforcement, our police officers, uh, they will go through and everything's going to be through the license plate now. So they can go through, they can read their license plates and they'll be able to know whether or not that vehicle is paid up or if in fact they don't have a, a parking um, permit for the day. So now they'll be able to go through and just read the license plates and um, right. and they'll be able to enforce parking that way. So right. it's, nice. you know, we looked into this, we've looked into other communities, we talked to the other communities who've been using it. There, there's a lot of um, positives that we've heard from it. So we live here, so I didn't even realize that parking could become that much of an issue, you yeah. know? Is there a lot of places to pay for parking? Because I know you don't along the streets. No, so we're not gonna do anything along the streets. So the, the lots that will be affected, and these are the same exact lots that you needed a sticker, okay. you know, to park so at in the summer. Changed. So that hasn't changed. Okay. So we have the Roosevelt Boulevard lot, which is a smaller lot right at the end of Roosevelt right. Boulevard. We have the lot at 16th and 17th Street, Beach Patrol headquarters there. Right, okay. So we have that lot. We have 26th to 27th Street parking lot. We have the lot at 34th Street. Okay. And we also have a small lot at 38th Street near the entrance. All right. So we're, we're working toward modernizing a lot of things. Bring this into this century. Yeah, you know, I've heard a lot of people say how they'd still have to go and get their beach passes and sign and yeah. write a check. And so it's, yeah, a little, little step into the... Absolutely into the future. All right, so, uh, hey, Tiger, thanks for stopping in and filling us in. Brigantine, there you go. Thanks, Greg. Thank you.